I used to hate this um, question. So what do you do? I literally used to shy away from it because I would go on some sort of rambling rant about, well, I used to work at Saracens and then we moved here with my husband. And then the question would always be, oh, what does he do? And it's kind of like, oh, um, well, uh, what's that got to do with me and why I'm here? And it just used to hack me off in the nicest possible way. Um, but now I absolutely love it um, because I've developed so many different responses that I kind of get quite a buzz of trying out different ones. Um, so one of them is I support expats to develop who they are as a brand um, so that they can relaunch themselves with a purposeful career. Um, or I use technology to, and culture to disrupt the traditional model of work. Um, or I just help organizations recruit lost talent. So lots of different responses depending on where I am. And I could also talk about kind of trail running and that I'm obsessed with the impact of neuroscience on early childhood development or digital marketing. Um, so none of it really fits under one job title. Um, and I think the days of us saying, well, I'm an accountant, um, is just as dull and just as boring. And people are like, oh, okay, I'm not really too sure what else to talk to you about. Um, and so our careers have evolved as we have evolved. Um, my career changed when I became a parent. Um, and now I'm actually in a position that the kids are at school to actually scale it up. And I have created something that I can spend time on that gives me a sense of purpose. So some of the stuff I do, I get paid for, some of the stuff I don't, but all of it gives me flexibility and control of how I am spending my time. And that's basically what I'm hoping and I want for you guys too, which is why we are all here. So if you haven't answered the question what you do, then pop that in. Or if you've got any funny ways that you like to respond to what you do, um, or if you've had any funny stories of how people have responded to you, um, it's always good for a bit of a laugh. Put those in the chat. Um, but what are you excited about doing in 2020? Has your career evolved as you have evolved? Um, or are you kind of stuck in this, I call it your bell jar, where you went to school and you studied hard and you went to university and then you started working. Um, and that is what you're known for and that is what you do. Um, how do you sparkle both professionally and personally? Do you manage to merge those? Um, and what do you want to prioritize? Now, what you do used to be such an easy question. Um, you had a plan, you would work hard at school, um, and you would just stay into that system. Maybe get married, maybe have kids, continue working, earn enough money, retire, and then you'll be happy. So pretty much this um, straight line, I'm sure you've seen this image before, it's all over the internet, um, but what reality really looks like is a big old squiggle. Whether you moved abroad or not, whether you stayed in your job or not, there comes a time when most of us is like, huh, now what, or is this it? Um, and there are, what I've realized since leaving the workforce is there are, we are not alone, guys. Like there are so many reasons why many of us are leaving the workforce as we know it. So maybe because you've got sick or you've been made redundant or because you've become too old or you're in an accident or you became a parent. Um, and so there are just so many reasons why we decide to take a career break um, and then it's up to us how we can return and that's the tricky bit is society hasn't really caught up and it's pretty hard for us to know who we are without our job title um, and so these are all maybe some of the reasons why you aren't um, why you aren't going back into work is because you don't feel valued, you're in the wrong job, you don't know what's available, um, you feel you're too old to start again, you've got no work permit, it's not the right time. There are so many barriers to stopping us from sparkling. 
But you know, remember that picture I showed you at the beginning with the commuter train is um, Gallup, who are an HR survey research company. They did a, the last survey they did across 147 countries said that only 13%, 13% of people are engaged in their career. So the whole system of work is broken. But for me, I was pretty lucky. I had, I was one of those 13%. Um, I had managed to create a job and a career in my passion, which was sport and particularly professional sport. I was busy working at London 2012. I had my whole life mapped out, very nice linear career path. Um, and then my husband was offered a job in South Africa. Um, I was like, is it Cape Town? No, it's Joburg. Uh, am I going to get shot? Uh, I don't know, <laughs> was the answer. Um, but you know, we moved and in the beginning, it was really exciting. I absolutely loved the new country. We loved traveling. We got a dog. Um, and, and we just like, I suppose many of you went on to have, take the time to have kids. Um, and <clears throat> for me, I was very much trying to do the now what, well, I'm known for being in sport, let me work in the same industry. And I'd worked for Francois Pinard, so I was pretty sure I would be able to continue to work in rugby. Um, but the reality was that, um, oh, and also volunteering, which I'm sure many of you have done, the reality was that I felt like this. I felt like I'd been thrown back into this 1950s, crazy um, time warp whilst the rest of my friends were kind of progressing with their careers and I was going to yoga and having cups of coffee um, which was great initially and it did give me time with the kids which was brilliant but I specifically remember going for this dog walk with a friend of mine and she was like oh so I'll see you later at such and such's birthday party and this was a mutual friend of ours who was two her daughter was two um, and I hadn't been invited and I literally just um, was had that massive lump in my throat and was like oh my goodness I, I don't know what to say and I was like oh no we're busy which was of course a lie and I got back in the car and I just burst into tears um, and I was like how on earth has this happened to me like we were only meant to be abroad for two years and it was meant to be this great adventure and now I don't even know who I am and I'm some crazy woman who's getting upset that she didn't get invited to a two-year-old's birthday party. That confidence that I once had in the last photos of working at Saracens was absolutely non-existent. I completely, both my husband and I, completely underestimated what moving abroad and not working anymore would have and the impact that would have on my confidence and I just didn't know how to get to this woman I didn't know how to get back to work um, I didn't I didn't have any certainty of what the next 15 years would look like and that was the, the, the hardest thing was I didn't understand what else was possible I didn't understand who I could be if I wasn't Hannah that worked from Saracens I knew I wanted to use my skills in some sort of meaningful way. I knew I wanted structure to my week, but I just couldn't be Matt's wife and the twins mum anymore. And maybe some of you can relate to that. And what is stopping you from, do you also feel like this 1950s housewife? Um, and kind of what's stopping you from using your sparkle? What's stopping you from using some of your passions? and put them in the chat for me. Is it like me that you're struggling with a work permit and you can't really discover your value without working? Or maybe it's that um, your partner travels and so you need to find a job that's part-time, but all of the stuff you've heard about that's part-time is kind of pyramid schemes and selling stuff on behalf of other people. Um, and you're just not really too sure about any of that. <laughs> Um, or maybe it's that your gap in your CV has been so big or you're worried about it being so big um, that you're just not sure who on earth would employ you. And so you've said yes to 
every single volunteer position going. You've said yes to every single lunch or yoga or whatever else is out there. But now you kind of miss the structure and miss feeling valued or feeling like part of a team. Um, but you're just not too sure where to start. Or maybe you're just not very good at tech. Um, and so it's great that the world is moving to remote working, but for you, you really want what you know. You really want to go back to what you know. And um, it's just too late for you to restart your career again. You've invested too much in the first, in your, in your first kind of profession. And so my challenge to you, the first challenge or the first assumption that most of us make, and certainly I made, is it took me five years to realize that I could have more than one passion. It took me five years to step out of that bell jar, which was Hannah, the sporting professional, um, to break free from what I thought my life was meant to look like or what success was meant to look like um, and start to look at other possibilities and be okay with, well, why can't I be Hannah, the professional sports marketeer and digital marketing and helping it at expats? Um, why can't I look for different alternatives and become known for something else? Um, and you know what? That was also the same for so many people that I have worked with. So Bea, and the wonderful Bea came on the Global Intern Programme when she had been in South Africa for 18 months. And her first um, uh, kind of goal for me is exactly the same as mine was. So Hannah, I've worked in HR. I don't have a work permit. I want to work in HR some more. Um, so the same industry and going back to that. Can you help me to do that? And then after doing the Sparkle framework, which is a personal uh, branding and development framework we use within the Global Intern Program, she started to break free of her bell jar. She started to explore different possibilities of things that she could do. And she realized that ever since she was a child, she had loved videography and taking videos of people. And so she started to go on additional training courses, but really she just started to practice being a videographer. So with her time here, she would um, learn a little bit, go and get some clients, run some projects. Um, and then now she's back in Switzerland. And instead of going back into HR, which we all thought she would do, um, she's actually decided to give this a go and works at co-office workspace and has she's fully booked for all of her clients all of the client spots that she has available she now has a waiting list of um, helping people to first of all do their personal branding videos online but then also to run a social media program around it or campaign around it then there's a brilliant Sylvia who after 20 years of raising four children she decided enough was enough and how something has to change. I have to get back into work. And she had come from Ernst & Young 20 years ago, um, but she felt she couldn't use her brain in the same way, or she didn't know how to plug in to use her brain in the same way. And after just three weeks on the Global Intern Programme, she realized that all, that all those skills, all that knowledge, it hadn't gone anywhere. She still had that um, thrive and the capacity to use her skills to make an impact. But for her, the Global Intern Programme was all about structure, giving her structure to her week, giving her a framework of things she could work through to explore new possibilities. And then there's a brilliant Janisha, who isn't an expat at all. Um, she's a South African and she decided that, well, she actually had a career break because of burnout and worked at Sassel. She had worked there for the first in her 20s and became incredibly successful. So she flew all over the world. She was on leadership program after leadership program. And then she started to get sick um, and part of it was the chemicals, but part of it was just she was working such long hours and she had no idea who she was anymore. Um, and so she has used the Global Intern Programme to create her voice and her story on Instagram. 
helping people who are also going through burnout, but more than that, helping to um, raise the awareness of sustainability and living a chemical free life. Um, and she will go on to work with businesses, I am sure, on their environmental strategies. Um, the world is completely her oyster. So she used the program to pivot, to get faith in herself. And so all three of them and me, we all got to the point where we were like, enough is enough. Now what? I've got to do something different. I've got to break free of this success story that I've told. And when you start to outgrow the status quo, that's when, um, that's when the magic happens or the sparkle happens. And that's when you can start to see possibilities. And so for me, after the utter breakdown <laughs> in the park, um, I started to blog and started to listen to podcasts and <clears throat> realized that I could work or I could use my skills in a meaningful way. I just had to start practicing and I just had to start taking action and trying things out. Um, and so I used my career break to break free from those expectations and those assumptions. And I started to invest in myself. I got a coach, I took programs, um, and I started to listen to my gut and understand what makes me sparkle <clears throat> and how do I want to work as well as what did I want to do. So it's been an absolute marathon. I would love to tell you it's a sprint. It's not. Um, and um, I'm now on about plan E, but I have consistent income from multiple different income streams. I have the flexibility and the control over my week. I'm doing things that I'm passionate about, whether it's real estate, whether it's helping people move to Joburg, whether it's supporting people to figure out what's next. And I'm a positive role model for the kids and I can show up as Hannah, as who I am and do fun stuff like this. Um, but more importantly, when I was back in the UK, I applied for three jobs. Um, so similar to, <clears throat> to Bia, when she moved back to Switzerland, we go back to what we know. Um, and, and, you know, I got through to the last on one of them and two, I didn't get an interview. And that would have crushed me before. But I've got my own stuff. I've taken control of a, a different alternative. And, um, and so that's basically what Translating Me is all about. It's about bringing back your sparkle and it's about creating new possibilities. It's not about changing leg legislation. Yes, that would be amazing. Um, but it's about bringing people together to figure out new ways, to figure out new role models and to really understand what it is and what matters most to us and mainly to step out usually of somebody else's shadow. So what would you like to do with your 2020? Maybe it's to return to your old job, maybe it's to start a side hustle, maybe it's to work part-time in the business or a freelancer. Just have a little think whilst I show you a quick video. Somebody will come. Anybody out there? Do you have a phone? No. Sorry. Somebody! Hello! There are two people stuck on an escalator and we need help. Now, would somebody please do something? So, how 
many of us are sat waiting for somebody to give us the perfect job opportunity or the perfect career or just have a little bit of faith in us and sponsor our work permit because we can be amazing honestly we're like on that escalator we are waiting for someone else to come and rescue us when actually sometimes we just need to start taking action we need to get off our butts and we need to walk up the stairs um, and it was easy for us to see that because we have a different perspective. And that's what having a career break does. It gives you a different perspective. So let me go back to here. But Hannah, that's all very well and good, but what are my stairs and how do I start climbing them? Now, sadly, as I said to Bea, to Sylvia, and to Janisha, and everyone else that I have worked with, there is no secret to success. Um, and anyone out there that tells you otherwise is it's rubbish. You, we all have to take our time to figure it out for ourselves. So if you are looking for your purpose, you're wasting time <laughs> because you create your own own purpose you create you discover your sparkle and your strengths and then you start taking action and you use those strengths to create stuff that you're proud of and I call this your spark projects but I'll come to that later and then you it's almost like these three you keep going round and round and round and you start to identify your own manifesto your own values and your own way of working and what makes you tick and what makes you feel your best and for me i think um freelance working and um and remote working is the best way that in and technology has enabled us to do that so instead of staying stuck in our bell jar let's look at how we can regain our sparkle and how we can look at different possibilities Thankfully, technology has changed the face of entrepreneurship or the freelance movement because it's no surprise that when I first fi figured out that I wanted to do something different, I started listening to podcasts and I started Google. And if you type into Google freelance or entrepreneurs, these are the kinds of faces that you that will crop up. And, and I didn't want to change the world. <laughs> I didn't want to innovate the next Facebook or Microsoft. I didn't want to work all hours. I just wanted to do something small, but that used my strengths and used my skills. And thankfully, technology has enabled us to do that, which is why 45% of the workforce in the US are now freelance. And one in mothers start a business whilst on maternity leave. Why? Because they've broken away from the system. They've branched out of their bell jar so that they can have a fresh perspective on their escalator or whatever is keeping them stuck. And they're starting to create a new possibility. The other statistic that I love is that we tend to think, well, this is all very well and good, Hannah, but it's for younger people um, <clears throat> that don't really want to work in the corporate world. And freelance, um, LinkedIn has their own freelance platform and they're on there, three in four are over 41 years old. So it is not just for young people. So there are lots of different possibilities or branches or roads that you could go and explore. Maybe you want to start your own business and you could do this online by selling stuff. I've got a friend who sells soccer gloves that she takes from Alibaba in China and sells them via Amazon into the US and she's based in Greece. So, you know, <laughs> it's truly global. Um, or you could start your own side hustle. And this is like a hobby, something that you've been good at, maybe photography. And this is what Beers started off as. Um, she gave herself permission to just explore a bit more of her hobby. Also Nina, um, who on her maternity leave became a photographer. And there's lots of different platforms out there for you to find freelance work on. Upwork's a massive one. The Dots is more for creative people. And then obviously LinkedIn as well. 
if you're teaching or you have knowledge or a passion about something, then maybe set up an online program. Um, another client is setting up her interior design service in the US and she's doing all of that online, teaching people how to style their houses, teaching them how to renovate. Um, and then obviously I think the best one is social media. And the reason I think that is that when you're a freelancer, you have to build trust. And it's quite hard when you live in a different country from your professional network to build that trust. And so social media is um, in demand skill. There is not a week that goes by when I don't get a phone call from an entrepreneur or a small business saying, Hannah, please, will you help us with our social media? Um, and so you can set yourself up to offer social media back to your professional network. So one of our global interns was a lawyer and she now runs the her old law school and two law firms in London, she runs their social media accounts. Another is a teacher and she started to fly around the world, similar to you Kelly, and um, fly around the world working with international schools, running their training for and running workshops for them. Um, so you can build upon your professional network by offering social media. And yes, you can do it on a retainer model, but you can also do it through workshops, which is a one-off thing. Now, going freelance is hard. You know, it, it's unknown. And we all, if we've taken a career break, that uncertainty and taking risks, it's hard, right? Um, but you will become known for more than one thing. You can find work globally and you can personalize how you work. So the benefits are massive. The risks is unpredictable. There's ups, there's downs. And as I said earlier, certainly a marathon and not a sprint. There's often times when you do what's workable rather than what's sparkly and absolutely this is my dream job you're not going to wake up tomorrow and start your dream job it just isn't going to happen <clears throat> so the best ideas come to us when we're no longer prepared to accept the status quo when we challenge the assumptions that are keeping us inside of our bell jar so it's my hope that in 2020 <clears throat> you start to explore the different alternatives but the thing is the second assumption is that we often say yes to too many things. So we have to know what our anchor is. We have to know what our non-negotiables are. If we don't, we will end up drifting, saying yes to everything, getting burnt out and helping a lot of other people, maybe within your family or within wherever you live, but not actually helping yourself to shine and sparkle. And that's when resentment starts to happen. So if you are at this stage, now what? You have a number of different options. You can go back and you can keep um, plodding along at what you are known for, or you can use this break away from the system to break out of your bell jar to start to explore different things and start to understand what I call is your anchor or your sparkle. And your anchor is this personal brand and personalized career section. So you need to work out your own manifesto, basically. So when you start at a company, they often say, this is the culture. You have the opportunity now to break free from that, to create your own culture. But it starts with understanding what your sparkle is and what you want to become known for. And this is where our Sparkle framework can really help you. Um, so this is part, also part of the global intern program that is almost like the backbone. So we start with your story at mapping out your highs and your lows, when you've had your strengths, when you felt rubbish, um, and unpicking and uncovering kind of who you are and what makes you tick. Then we can look at all the different possibilities, going back to your childhood, looking forward, um, before we start to really try those out. And this is what every app developer, it's called design thinking. They will always have four versions of things that they try out. So I challenge you to create four different um, possibilities of what you could do over the next five years. Um, and how your life would be different as a result of each of those five different possibilities. 
making sure that it's authentic, making sure that you don't slip back into somebody else's version of success, that you believe and you have faith in your own reality and your own version of success to make sure that it's authentic and it's your you're anchored in your own success because once you are anchored in your own manifesto then you can start to take risks to make sure that you are becoming relevant staying relevant that you are keeping inspired so that you keep your own belief in yourself so rather than waiting for someone else to tell you you're doing a good job that actually you know you are um, and you know what makes you tick um, and then that you constantly are learning before you engage others. Often we go to engage others first, but we haven't built up any portfolio. We haven't built up any trust. And so we're on that escalator, just hoping that someone will give us a chance or give us a job. Whereas if we've gone through all of this process first and this framework, then we really understand what's important to us. Then we really understand what values and what contribution we want to make and how we want to sparkle. And then other people can help us along the way. So it's all about figuring out your own manifesto and your anchor. And of course, digital can help us with that. So it can help us if you're not sure where to go to how to get inspired. If you don't know what's inspiring you at the moment, get online, start searching LinkedIn, start searching Twitter um, and Instagram. What are cool people doing? What podcasts can you listen to? Start doing your own research. You can sparkle online and then ultimately you will build that trust. So I am going really quickly through a lot of this. There is lots of extra articles and videos all inside our Portable Careers for Expats Facebook group. So I can signpost you to those at the end as well. But once you are anchored in what matters most to you and how you want to work and what skills you want to do, then you can become a lot more agile and a lot more squiggly and understand where you are going. So <laughs> I think we're all pretty much aware that the CV, the days of the CV are gone. So your CV, you used to be able to put your um, job titles and that was enough for an employer to gain trust that you know what you're doing and so you're the best person for the job. And that was when you were competing against kind of other people within the local town or city for that job. Now, because of technology, you are competing on a global stage. So they could hire somebody in India, someone in America, someone in the UK. So it, the job titles aren't as important. The second reason job titles aren't as important anymore is because technical skills are more and more done by AI. They're more and more done by computers and robots and, and will, that will happen faster and faster or more and more. So what we can do is those personal skills. And don't tell me that people that have taken career breaks stopped developing those personal skills. They are flipping resilient, adaptable, agile, because it's hard to move country. It's hard to raise children. You have to prioritize. So you don't stop learning because you aren't getting paid for a job anymore you can continue and you will continue to develop and to evolve. You are a very different person now to the person that first moved abroad or first took a career break. And so your CV is now your story online and it needs to be looking forwards at what you want to do rather than looking back. And so your online story needs, you need to have a good idea of what you want to do, like where you want to be headed to, what are the different four possibilities, who you're helping, um, so who you're talking to, who are you making a difference with, what makes you special, so what makes you sparkle, and then what do you want to be known for? And it's no surprise that 80% of jobs go to people within a network. Why? Because they've already proven themselves. They've already built up trust. So you've got to be out there, be showing up, be networking, but only once you know what it is, how you can add value. And the best way to figure that out is to validate it by doing your own Spark project. 
So the thing that stops us from taking action is that we try to play it safe. Um, and Mel Robbins, who's um, she's written a great book in, I can't remember, I should look it up. In her book, she talks about the five second rule and that our brain likes to keep us safe. It likes to keep us in that bell jar. And so when we think of um, an, an innovative, <laughs> an innovative can't say it, well, um, idea then our brain shuts it down straight away by oh you can't do it you don't have the skills to do it or oh someone else is doing it um, whatever it might be it stops you from taking action so our spark projects are overriding that it's getting out of your comfort zone um, and so next time in her book she gives you a technique of the five second rule so next time you want to go to the gym or you want to start an idea, you count down from five, five, four, three, two, one, and then you go and do one small thing that will help you um, progress that idea. And just by taking things that I see that are playing it safe is we study more, we go and do an MBA or we become a, a coach um, without actually knowing what the next stage is. And so I completely did this. I became a coach thinking I would get lots of work. And then I realized that the majority of money that's made from coaching is training other people to become coaches. <laughs> Um, and so there's so much being on offer for free during your training that very few people will pay themselves for coaching. So it, it, you can't build a career or you can build a career, but it's hard to build a career around. Um, you go and join the PTA, you focus on your own wellness. All of this is really important, but you also need to be doing stuff that's getting you out of your comfort zone and exploring new realities. So in 2020, maybe you could run four projects, one for each quarter. I love breaking the year down into 90 days um, because it, it makes it possible, whereas a whole year is way too much. Um, so what project? Just jot down either in the chat or if you've got a notepad, just jot down what are some of the projects that you could start? So maybe you could run a workshop, maybe you could write an article in a magazine, um, maybe you could invite some potential clients over for a pop-up shop, um, maybe you could create a really, really minimum um, version of what that product is that you're quite excited about. So what are four different projects that you could start or four different things that you could focus on next year? Because then those can be your anchors and that will then help you to say yes and no, more importantly, um, to certain things. So 2020 is the year of practice. <laughs> so it's the year of trying different things and then bringing that back into learning more about what makes you tick, how you want to work. Do you work better in the morning? Do you work better in the evenings? Do you work better at a co-office working space? Do you work better at home? And you can start to build your own manifesto that then, and your own values, that then when you do go for jobs later on, you know what your non-negotiables are and how you work best. Because it's only once you know what your non-negotiables are that you can be innovative and creative because you will feel grounded and settled in knowing who you are so that then you can build trust in others can then build trust in you. So our assumptions um, that hopefully you're not going to make <laughs> or you'll be able to go through them much quicker. Are you playing it safe in 2020 or just look back to 2019? How are some of the ways that you know that you play it safe? Um, are you trying, like I was, to repeat your old life in a new situation? Or are you happy to accept the reality that things are different wherever you live? Are you constantly just looking or, or do you want to be known for more than one thing? Are you looking for your purpose or are you happy to start creating it and learning about who you are and evolving it as you yourself have evolved? 
do you say yes to way too many things rather than focusing just on the things that are important to you? Um, and do you think, or are you scared of starting from scratch? Because let me tell you, just because you don't have a job title in it does not mean you are an expert at it. There is so much fraud out there. People are saying they are one thing and they are completely not. Um, <clears throat> so I'm not saying that you should do that, but you have so much so many skills that you have developed that can be transferable and can be broken down. There's a great um, book called The Portfolio Career and she talks about your skills as ingredients. And so you can break down to figure out your ingredients and then you can make soup with them or you can make spaghetti bolognese with them or you can make whatever else with them. You don't have just purely technical skills that will be used for only one outcome. So sparkling bright doesn't have to come from striving to have it all, whatever having it all is. Um, working more or finding confidence, it comes from listening to the most powerful part of you, not the voice of self-doubt. So we need to start understanding what's keeping us in our bell jar so that we can break free. And there is a ton of trial and error. And I have to say the emphasis more on the error, but we are trying. And we, my um, first business coach talked to me about Lego blocks. And he would, he would say that we are just building and trying one block at a time. And before you know it, you will have your city. You will know you will be in your dream life or your dream career. Are we nearly there yet? <laughs> is I wanted to try and find pictures of my kids in the car but anyway um are we nearly there yet no it's it's this is a long-term strategy it's not a sprint it is a marathon you will constantly be refining these things um but if you start to dream bigger than that one possible outcome that you were taught at school if you start to break free and start to personalize your own version of success. And once you know what that is, then you will be able to have the confidence around it. And then other people will believe in you because you know why it's important and what your non-negotiables are. And then you start to take action in your Spark project and making things happen so that you can learn more about yourself and what your anchors are. So in 2020, I want you to dream more. I want you to believe in yourself and believe what would you do if you were 100% certain you would succeed at it. If next year you knew guaranteed, fast forward 10 years, that you would be on stage delivering a TED talk, what would that TED talk be? And then once you know that, then you can start to sparkle by building. And sometimes it is literally just crawling. <laughs> so what is it time for? What skills, what, what is your spark project going to be? And hopefully these questions can help you to figure that out for yourself. So what are you missing? Who inspires you? Have you explored different possibilities, particularly in the freelance world? Um, do you know what makes you sparkle? And are you showing that best side of yourself online? And how are you building your portfolio in line with your personal brand? So are you saying yes to things that actually, they're not your sparkle, they're not your strengths, they're just filling up your time? Um, so jot down these questions and you can use them to map out your spark projects that you can focus on for 2020. Um, so this is the, the, the model that we use. So you, first of all, when you move abroad and you've got the now what, it's important that you give yourself space, that you give yourself time to fully come to terms with the fact that things are different. <laughs> um, once you come to terms with that, then you can start to ask yourself the big questions, to start to get uncomfortable, to start to walk up the stairs rather than looking for other people to rescue you. You figure out, okay, well, what are my possibilities? Maybe what are the possibilities in the freelance and the remote world, as well as looking for jobs to return to continue being an expert. So this isn't to replace your um, 
your old job. I fully intend to at some stage in my life go back to sport, just not right now when the kids are small and I'm living in Joburg um, because it doesn't work for me. Who knows where we're going to live next? Um, it's not gone. It's still there. I'm just using the skills that I took from that to create different realities, to create different spark projects. What are some of the projects you can create? And do you know what your anchor is? So for some of you, that is more than enough to get cracking on with. Um, and, and you will, you kind of have a rough idea of a business or a side hustle that you could focus on in 2020. Um, but for others of you, you actually would love a little bit of extra help. Um, you're looking for the structure and the, the program and to do it alongside other people so that together you can get different in inspiration from how one another is doing it. And so for you, our Global Intern Programme is a flipping brilliant opportunity. I really wish that when I first moved aboard, I had something like this. And so we are different from other companies. This isn't just another course um, that teaches you social media. There's so much online that does that. Um, this is a fluid and a personalized structure. So we keep the, the groups really small so we can give one-to-one -one feedback throughout the whole thing. Um, but it's also built on the experiences of everyone that comes through it. So it's constantly updated and it's a very fluid structure. It's based obviously on technology, which is constantly changing. So we are always updating it, but it is based around these four main kind of pillars. And what that enables you to do is to then be able to take these new approach and your digital skills either back into your current work um, or your current role, or it enables you to start out as a freelancer in your own right. It gives you access to amazing mentors, to people that are living the life that have managed to create a remote career um, and to show you what is possible. And it also connects you to women all over the world um, that are also taking part in this program. So you get different perspectives um, from their own careers and their own experiences of a career within whatever countries they have lived in. So let me explain a little bit about, about what it is and how it all works and comes together. So, Initially, the kind of backbone is our Sparkle framework, um, and that is, gives you the tools not just for your career, but also for you to use for the rest of your life. So our Sparkle framework isn't a one, one like week program that then you're fixed. No, you constantly, it's a cruel. You know, this is hard stuff. If you haven't gone through coaching before, it's really hard to start peeling back the layers of the onion because we've always looked to other people to come and rescue us before. We've always looked for a known system of how we can be successful. We haven't looked to ourselves to actually trust our gut. And so we give you the tools to support you in doing that. We also know that if you've been out of work for a while, as I was, it's hard to regain your confidence. And so this framework and the coaching models will help you to rebuild your confidence and rebuild your self-esteem on what is you internally rather than externally on what people are willing to offer you as a job or what they say about you. So we start by mapping out your whole career, the highs, the lows, when you felt great, when you were really in your sparkle, who were you around, what type of people do you want to be around, and really starting to create and unpick that anchor. And also then how are you sparkling online to make sure that your best self is online. But once you know all of this, then you know what you're prioritizing, what you're saying yes to and what you're saying no to. We then have the structured part of the program, which is an eight week program, all online um, and it's all accessible 24 seven. So there's videos, there's worksheets. You could binge watch it over a weekend if you wanted to, um, or we go through it module by module, week by week. Um, 
it covers sociology, it covers how technology it gives you insights into how our consumer buying habits are changing, case studies from across the world, how companies are using social media. It's all the kind of technical knowledge that you would expect from any other program. Then you actually get to practice um, because it's pointless in knowing all this knowledge in taking another course unless you're breaking out of the bell jar, unless you're actually willing to take the risk to jump and to put yourself into that uncertainty place where you're not known as a social media manager and, and you're not too sure how it's going to work out. But let me tell you, we are with you every step of the way and time and time again participants that have been through the program say that this is the best part because they get to feel proud of doing it and they get to realize that they can do it again and they can add value and it's completely not pressured all of the clients are really lovely and it's up to you who you want to work with and what area you want to work in and then finally we've got a brilliant network of wonderful people um, from across the world who are supporting you who are one step ahead that have already done the program or are right there with you within your cohort and um, there's that saying which i think it was seth godin said you're the sum of the five people you hang out with the most and so make sure that you are surrounding yourself with people that are taking risks that are go-getters and that are creating their own versions of success Clearly, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, and so we have a whole module, which is all around the systems you need, how to price your new services, how to find clients. We give you all the templates on how to run a social media audit for people, how to run a workshop, how to um, set up terms and conditions and boundaries with clients. All of that is all included too in the, um, the knowledge and the framework. So the the um the coaching framework is all on the sparkle framework which i mentioned earlier and um oh the wonderful daria so daria came and did the program um, she was completely burnt out um and she wanted to use the program to take her career to make it portable so that she could move to london or spend more time in london and she's just said that it's given her more than just digital skills it's given her the confidence and the support and the structure that she needed to change her career and just on tuesday night when we had our call hetty was saying how it's the structure of every tuesday meeting up with a group of other people that's forced her to take action and the accountability that she's really thrived from she was working in marketing um, but has lived in four different countries and has been out of work for eight years well six years um, and so she kind of had a grounding in marketing, but this framework has enabled her the confidence and the structure to be able to know how to package up her services. So the LCA framework is um, a one page framework, very simple, and you could then take that into any agency um, or work with any individual step by step to create them their own campaign. So how will you learn? You learn with the resource library that's all online that you get access to 24 seven. We then come together every week to learn from each other, to ask the questions, to tackle the sparkle framework, to get confused, to cry, to celebrate, to get excited with one another and to hear one another's stories. And then we have our guest masterclasses and these are phenomenal people. Um, Tessa, works with she's actually the person that created jamie oliver back in london all those years ago and since moving to joburg she's worked with tasha's she's worked with lewis Pugh, she works with all the amazing lodges um, and she charges two and a half thousand dollars just for um, her three hour personal branding workshop but she is amazing at uncovering your sparkle and figuring it out <clears throat> then Spilly has written a book in the MBA of freelance, going freelance. There isn't anything that he doesn't know about freelance world and he can give you all of that information um, and all the statistics and show you what's possible. Um, and then every cohort we take on, to, or we do two live guest masterclasses. So we've had copywriters, we've had people from McKinsey, but we've also had amazing expats or diplomats who have managed to create their own portable careers. And they come and tell us their story because 
it's great having someone from Deloitte or McKenzie come and talk to us, but actually what we want to know is how does that person structure her week? How has she managed to get clients in Kenya and the US when she's based in Italy? You know, that's, that's the important, those are the role models of people that are doing stuff that we can copy and learn from. So who you work with and your work placement really depends up to you. So we can find that for you. I, as I said, there's not a week that goes by when I don't have somebody that asks for someone. Um, but also if you want to use it within your own professional network or you want somebody that's local because you're based in Belgium, then you can find somebody and I will of course help um, where I can and give you all the information you need to help sign that person up. It's a four week social media campaign that you will run. Um, and yeah, and, and once we've done the Sparkle framework, you can then understand how you're gonna do it and where you're gonna do it. So, sounds amazing, huh? How much is it all costing? And because it's Black Friday too, I've got a special offer for you all. So for the, as I said, Tessa charges 250,000, 250,000, that's a lot, $2,500, I get confused with rand and dollars, um, just for her, for that masterclass, um, which you will get access to, but also don't forget you get the whole Sparkle framework process. Then you get the online teachable resources. And if we were to sell that as a standalone program, it would be $800. Obviously, the weekly coaching calls, it's a small group, you get lots of personalized time and attention, and then either a Facebook group or a WhatsApp forum depends on what social media you prefer. So all of that is $2,300. But because it is Black Friday, um, I am happy to, if you sign up by the end of November, which is Sunday, then I can pay the VAT for you and so it would just be two thousand um, dollars but you will need to pay your deposit of eight hundred dollars um, by Sunday so what's the process to sign up um, here's the link I can put that in the chat as well um, you simply fill out an application form and then we have a quick 30 minute virtual coffee or chat and this is really to understand that you are the right fit for the current cohort um, so we have a good cross-section of different experiences different interests different nationalities different perspectives to really be able to support one another through the three-month program and then from there if you're accepted then um, we will uh, can draft up the invoice and send you the pre course coaching sparkle framework book which you can then work on over christmas to help you map out your 2020 so you can so this will be january february march there's just a few places it's always a popular cohort the january one so i've just got a few places left if you miss out on the january one we will run another one in may so i run three cohorts every year um, because it's black friday uh, in addition to the discount the first two people that sign up will have a one-to-one -one private um, session with tessa so she will give you feedback on your own personal brand print um, which is only for the first two people that come along so here are some of the other amazing people that have signed up and what they got from the program. But I really hope moving abroad and taking a career break was the hardest thing I have ever done in my life, but I do not regret any of it. I just wish I had a program like this to help speed it up for me. Um, but it has helped me to walk up the stairs. It has helped me to stop calling and asking for feedback and asking for other people to give me opportunities. It's helped me take the leap and unpick myself from being a human, a human doing to being a human being again, from being known for doing stuff to actually having faith and, and belief in myself and knowing what my anchor is and knowing what my manifesto is for how I can sparkle more. And so I hope that that will happen for you guys.
two questions. Let me just stop sharing. Sorry, we have run over time a little bit. Uh, yeah, Kelly, completely, right? Like it's so frustrating that when you apply for something that you know you're completely overqualified for, but, but people don't have the trust that you can be good at that job or not even can be good at that job, but you will frigging kick ass at that job. And that is the sad reality of the world that we are living in. I'm hoping it will change. And I think it has to change because as I said, there's so much talent that is out there that isn't able to access the traditional way of work. So whether that's because you've got mental health or whether that's because you've had kids. Um, and so it is changing, but until, um, it does change. We've got to do something for ourselves. Um, and there's more and more opportunities to be able to do that and to start down the unknown road. And you never know what's going to happen at the end of it. 